Wall Street Memes Casino. I'm fine. And Sportsbook. I said the same thing to Fraser, man, but the entire boxing industry is talking about that show. One of the best fights they've ever seen. People are calling it definitely one of the best British title fights, but just an amazing fight all around. As someone that continues to excel in their career, man, to, to now put on that type of show, I mean, how do you feel? Yeah, look, that, um, that fight, that, that was, it was one for the books. I, I've said already that that, that that British title brings out a lot in people. Um, and definitely between me and Fraser, it brought out the best in us. I think. There was, there was a, it was, like you said there, it was, a, it was a fight for the books, one for the, one for the histories, because we know how much that belt means to a lot of people and how much obviously means to me and means to us, and we've got the hand for sure. Absolutely. Mike Lafoe joined us as well. Thank you for joining us. I'll ask a quick question to you as well. I mean, obviously, you ride or die for Fabio. You obviously manage him and work with him, man. So watching that and seeing the reception of everything and just an instant classic, how do you feel? Yeah, uh, I share the same opinion. It was a classic. Um, both of them showed great grit. And then they grinded it out. I thought Fabio won me one point or two. <clears throat> when you look at the the knockdown and the point deduction, I don't know how we can uh, see a one fifteen, one twelve. I thought Fabio won by round, um, but yeah, he put in a fantastic effort and showed everybody why he's the champion um, and why he will remain the champion for as long as he wants to be the champion. Absolutely. Ben, you already spoke very highly of Fabio, but anything else that you want to say? Yeah, just uh, incredible. Um, we knew he had heart. But to be that dangerous, even when he's hurting, and to keep coming, and it, it's, it, was, it was special. And um, for both of them, to be honest, we both got, well, everyone got a classic. Um, but those late rounds, when both of them are out of their feet, and they just keep coming, I mean, Fabio's face was, uh, was a sight to behold. And he just, he just kept getting up, and at no point did I feel like uh, Fraser didn't have to be careful. And that says a lot about Fabio. Um, it, was a, it was an unbelievable fight, and hopefully um, one that the fans will get to see again, but I'm just delighted they got such a, such a classic. Absolutely. To the room. Any microphones can pass around? Fabio, can I ask, how is your nose? Uh, is it broken and, and how painful was that in there to resist that? Yeah, my nose has seen better days. Um, it's not broken, it's just a, a consistent, like, I've had a scar on there for a while now that just keeps opening up, so, yeah, it's not the, um, it's not the most helpful in the middle of the fight, but it's not broken, it's perfectly fine. Still look good. Yeah, I'll <laughs> win in the morning. It looked really painful, can I ask how, how difficult that became to consent? Yeah, no, it was just more of an annoyance, to be honest. Just like blood getting in my mouth, blood getting in my eyes. That's more of it. Like when you're in the middle of a firefight like that, in a fight like that, you're not going out. That punch hurts. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just cracking on and trying to get the job done. So yeah, it was just more aggravating than anything. Have we seen Dillian in a really good British heavyweight title fight? Have you spoken to him about him? Has he told you what good fight he thought he was? Yeah, look, as soon as, I got, <clears throat> as soon as he got in the ring, um, he was immediately telling me how proud he is, how much he loves me, how much he, he loved that fight, and, and, well, maybe not how much he loved it, because he definitely cares for me and doesn't like to see me in those kind of, those type of tear-ups, those kind of fights, but that's, that is also part, part of the reason why, he's, why he initially first picked me and took me under his wing, because he knew that was in me, he knew that heart was in me. I'm from the same cloth that he is, I'm built the same way he is, he's been in those wars and he's come up and, and I'm going through it as well. So mine was going to come sooner or later, um, I don't want to be in too many more of them, I've probably, probably knocked off a few years of my life for that, but it's all in the name of a good bit of fun. And lastly, Fraser's come in here already and said he really wants a rematch, is that the same for you? Yeah, look, it's an option, isn't it? It's, um, it's, the fans are probably going to ask for that. Um, I'm never, I'm never going to count a draw as a win, but I've, I've still got my belts, and there's still a lot of options on the table for me to look around. And whether it be the rematch, whether it be other options, whether it be something else, we'll, we'll take some time. I need five minutes or so, and then we'll, we'll reassess. Uh, congratulations on a brilliant performance. Um, I was asking the same question, just asked Fraser Clark, but you didn't get the win, but you were involved in one of, if not the best British heavyweight title fights that we've seen on these shores for many, many years. How does that make you feel? Yeah, look, I'm immensely proud. Immensely proud. The performance itself, I'm not the most happy with. Um, I did a lot of things wrong, I made a lot of mistakes. But it's all learning. Um, I know I've had 16, 17 fights in this game now, or 18 this one, but 
I'm still quite fresh, I'm still learning, um, and that fight definitely taught me a lot. So to be able to, to put on a performance like that, um, <clears throat> in terms of entertainment value for the fans, and and just give the belt the respect it deserves to be fought for like that is something I'm immensely proud of. The opening rounds, the first three or four rounds, you were know, having to deal with that lead hand from Fraser. Just how difficult was that? How did you get past it? Yeah, no, I was I was having to assess and, and take some time and look at things. Um, in them initial rounds, he was actually a bit sharper than I thought he might be, and he came out pretty well and was was shooting that jab away. And I had to it had to take me some time to figure it out and figure out some timing and stuff. But eventually, I did. Um, final question for you is. It's been well documented in the build up before white collar fights and this and that. Um, just what does it mean to, to play your part in something like that, considering where you've come from? I know it's part of the story that you've kind of tried to move away from, but it is relevant. How do you feel knowing how many people are watching this and go, I've done my car, I can do that? Yeah, no, that's something I, I pride myself on. No matter where, no matter how it's brought up, no matter how people speak about it, white collar is a part of me. Um, it's where I started from. So. I've always been extremely proud of it and I've always wanted to be the, the person that someone can look towards and say, look, okay, I'm doing my collar, but if I love the sport, I'm dedicated, I'm committed, I want to give myself to it, I can have success in professional boxing. So to be able to carry that on my shoulders is something I'm, I'm hugely proud of and will, will always be. Congratulations again, credit to Richard Boxing. Thank you. Wow. Uh, mate. Hey, mate. First of all, that was crazy. It was a crazy fight. Can you explain, can you explain a little bit about what goes through your head <coughs> when you're doing a, a bloody nuts war like that that's back and forth and Ben said here, you look so dangerous, like you want to bring you going out. Yeah, I was, um, I was worried about my mum, I think. I was like, oh, she's not going to like this. <laughs> <laughs> I think they were sat ringside, so I was like, they are not going to enjoy this one. But yeah, it's hard to even go on because when you're in the thick of it, I'm just worried about what I'm trying to do, trying to avoid what he's doing. Your, con your brain's constantly going, I'm constantly thinking and trying to come up with different ways and what works and what doesn't work. So I'm not too focused on everything else and I'm, I'm focused on what's immediately in front of me. You obviously speak about a rematch. Uh, we spoke in the build up to this about how a fight at Portman Road would need to be a big, big fight. This rematch, if it happens, would be a big, big fight. It'd be big, even bigger. Is that something that you'd like to say? I know the football club are up for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look, Mark and, and everyone at the club, um, they've been huge supporters of me for a long time now and came to the fight and, and has always backed me and supported me. So bringing a fight to Portman Road has is, is been on the cards and something I've been talking about for a long time. Um, whether it's the rematch or, or something else, one way or another, I'd, I'd like to tick that off before the end of my career. Thanks, Val. Cheers, mate. Fabio, I just asked Fraser the same question. I know it's a little bit soon after the fight, but... <coughs> What do you think is the biggest lesson that you learned after that fight? Don't get punched too much in the fight, probably. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know, there's a lot of lessons to be learned in that fight, to be honest. There are real kind of nuances in it as well. Um, small details and things I was, I was messing up and, and not getting right and consistently doing wrong in certain spaces as well. So look, I've, I know I've had more professional experience, but Ultimately, I've only I've only had a pair of gloves on my hands for about six years, seven years. So I'm um, I'm always learning on the job. Um, I'm always figuring out as I go along, and this is just a, another one of those. I took a took a few too many punches. I didn't come out this one too pretty, but it's all lessons learned. Was he as tough as what you expected as well? Probably tougher, to be honest. Like, I'll I'll give him the credit for that. He was tougher than I expected. When he went down, <clears throat> I thought, okay, cool, here we go, get him out of there, and. He got up and weathered the storm and I got him adding going a few, three or four other times in the fight as well and he weathered them and got through them. So, look, credit to him for, for being a strong, brave man in that, in that ring. Fabio, Fabio. Well, yes. Look, both you and Frazier deserve tremendous respect for obviously what you put on in the ring there. You said prior to the event that you liked to visit that dark place and he was going to take you there. Um, do you feel that, that you ended up in there a bit longer than you wanted tonight? And realistically, how many more bills can, can you go with? Yeah, look, I was probably in there from the, the first bell, to be honest. Um, it, it's, it's not an ideal way to box. It's not an ideal way to fight. Um, it definitely takes some years off your life and, and worries the people around you. So it's not something I'm planning to do too often. Um, but ultimately, there's value in it, knowing that it's there, knowing that I did it over 12 rounds, went through the fire, and, and carried through and always had energy all the way through the fights to try and get him out of there and try and push it. That, that's, 
Their, their big box is ticked. Fabio, uh, something we've touched on before, obviously, and you've just touched on it there. Your uh, coach, uh, Robert Hodgins, as well, you've been on a massive journey together. How does it feel to reflect on the journey from white collar uh, to headlining the O2 in, like, in a British classic? For, for yeah, look, it's, it's massive, isn't it? It's, it's, a, it's a hell of a story. <coughs> um, a few more of those, and maybe Netflix will get on the phone and try and write something. It's. Um, it's massive for me. Like even just on the walk up here, he was he was nudging me and bumping into me and saying, "Look, look where you're after four white qualified shit. You headline the O2. You stacked it out. There was fifteen thousand people in there to watch you. You just lit an old white qualifier from Ipswich. So, yeah, there's a lot to be proud of. Um, and I'm also I'm also massively proud that I was able to to bring my team with me as well. All the people you see around me have been with me from from day dot. Really, there's there's not too many new additions. Um, not too many new faces because. I believe that along the journey, the, the people I trust, the people I love, the people that are with me from the start will be with me to the end. Wall Street Memes Casino. I'm fine. And Sportsbook.